Well, happy Monday. Did anybody watch the Grammys last night? Yes. So first of all, let's get it out the way. I want to say congratulations to all the winners, because I know what it feels like to be at the Grammys. All the performers and all the nominees. Everybody looked so good. They sounded good. It was amazing. I had a good time watching. I ain't look too good watching it on my couch, though. But you know, sometimes you got to chill and watch the Grammy. So, And a special shout out to Trevor Noah for being such an amazing host. Now, I'm not sure if y'all remember, but last year was a big one at the Grammy Awards, too, because they celebrated the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, they did. The tribute included performances from incredible artists, including Run DMC. Yes, they did. Woo They're an iconic group, so influential in hip hop music culture and style. See me rocking my glasses right now, like, hey, let me get in the spirit. I have been lucky enough to meet a lot of legendary musicians, but I have never had the opportunity to meet Rev Run, y'all. Look, I mean, check him out. Listen, I have always wanted to meet him, and I always want to have him here on my show. Well, today's the lucky day, because Rev Run is in the building. And that's the way it is. It's like, uh, okay, listen. Now, y'all know I've been honoring legends all season long, and today he is going to join that club, y'all. Give it up for the one and only legend, Reverend. Never met you before. How, how have we never met you before? I don't before? know. We just crossed paths, and well, today's the day. It's the day, and I'm so grateful for this day. Thank I'm you excited so to be here. much for being here. You, you're such an icon. Thank you. It is such a blessing you. to Thank have you here and to finally be in your presence. Didn't oh. he inspire us all, y'all? Coming out of Hollis Queens, like, did you ever think you would have this type of success and the uh, impact that you've made? You know, when you're young and you're getting on the mic, you're just doing it for love. I know you know with singing, you're not thinking, I want to be a star. You're right. just doing what you love. So I was just kind of following what I wanted to do. I love to DJ. Mm -hmm. I learned how to DJ at DMC's house in the basement and I honed my craft in my attic in Hollis. See, yeah. So for me, it was never like, oh, I'm gonna be a big star. It was can I get on those turntables? It was mm. always like, can I, can I get some? Can I get the mic? So when, when that's your passion, usually things follow. Right. Because you're never like focused on being a star. You're focused on- Your passion. That's it. The love for it. I totally understand. Do what you understand. love and everything else follows. And it'll make room for you, right? Yeah, oh. Gift make room. Okay. I'm gonna start you preaching. That? I, okay. Oh, I ain't gonna preach that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> We're gonna turn this into church. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We accept that at the happy place. Now, how old were you when you started DJing? I was like 14 years old. 14. 14, 15, and DMC had turntables in his basement. He had a Gemini mix and two turntables. And I didn't, I'm like, what is this? And yeah. he's like, this is how you do it, Joe. And I learned, I ran home. And I was down with Curtis Blow, too. I guess a whole lot of stories mixed with this. So. Oh, y'all, yes. I was, I was known as the son of Curtis Blow. So I did a couple of shows for Kurt, made some money, and I put some turntables in my attic. Mm. And I got better and better and better. And that's how it all came together, just, just learning as I went along. Mm. But I DJ better than I rap. Oh, you, okay. Much better. You DJ better than you rap. So when did you, like, decide to... Put it all together? Put it all together. Well, you know, when you like when I did Mary Mary, I was just in my basement like mixing Mary Mary with a record called I Can't Stop. So I'm a masher. I mash records together like you see Walk This Way mm -hmm. or Peter Piper because we didn't have anything to rap over. We had to rap over beats that we found out your mother's collection. You pull up a Bob James record or you pull up a Billy Squire, you pull up Aerosmith and you scratch them together and that would make the beat. And when the beat is made, then you rap over it. So all the records that were put together, I was known as the dude like here, I got this idea. Tricky was actually made as we, on top of it's like that. The record you came out dancing was yeah. like that. Man. Uh, yeah. okay. So we was rapping. You know he just hits you like. Okay. <laughs> well, right, 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 right. True. So <laughs> we used to do Tricky over it's like that, and then we said, okay, let's tr make Tricky a real record. Wow. We should just do a little piece because when the break comes, you have to find what you're gonna do. You can't say throw your hands in there every time. So we do this, Tricky do rock a rhyme do rock, and we did that over it's like that, and then we got to the studio and made the real record Tricky. Mm. 
So, Run DMC was always the name. Was that always the name you wanted to use? Nah, back in the day, you would have names like The Furious Five or Grandmaster Flash or Funky Four Plus One. So we were gonna be the short shot, too. And then management came up and said, why don't you call yourself Run DMC? Because I was Run and he was DMC. Mm -hmm. But we wasn't gonna call ourselves Run DMC. We were gonna be the short shot, too, like everybody else, the Funky Four or the Treacherous Three. <laughs> So we was like, we're the sure shot, too. He's like, no, no, let's do this. And it was, sounded weird at first. We was like, all right, we'll go with it. We listened to management, and it kind of worked out. It kind of worked out. A little something, something. It more than worked out. I got to ask, where y'all get y'all style from? The streets. The streets. We, we would go on Jamaica Avenue in Queens. You see? And whatever was in the store, if we had a couple bucks, we'd get an Adidas suit or some sneakers. You made it and, fly. Yeah, we, well, that, we took the beat from the street and put it on TV took the beat from the street and put it on TV. And we didn't have outfits. The outfits was what, whatever we had on in the hood. Yeah. So whatever you got on, go on stage. How you feel when you still see people rocking your looks today? Ah, oh, man. I'm inspired by what rappers did before me. So when people tell me, oh, like Ice Cube or somebody, like, I love what Run DMC did, and I'm thinking, about, oh, I love what Grandmaster Flash did. I love what, what, uh, what Grandmaster Kaz did. Mm -hmm. So I had heroes of my own. So I can accept when somebody says they love what I do, because I know how I get shook when I see Melly Mel. <laughs> like, well, that's Melly Mel. <laughs> Don't push me, because uh, I'm close, close to, to the, the edge. edge. Right, so when okay. I see Melly Mel, I'm like that. So if somebody sees me and they say it, I'm like, okay, I get it. You're like what I wear when I see Flash. Yeah. Because Flash is the original dude. Wow. On them turntables. Listen at this. Okay, okay. I love right, right, right. learning from the legends history. like yourself. You got me on the edge of my chair. You see me that? Me too. I got the history coming at you. That history coming at us. Okay, now... LL came in, I need the timeline. A little bit after. After y'all, right? He's from around Hollis, right there on Farmers Boulevard. All these legends came from the same. Yeah, LL, LL was definitely a threat with the big muscles and... Okay, so he was a little competition. Yeah, How y'all feel about him coming out? There's a lot of competition, because he would come, my radio! <laughs> Somebody, somebody's after the crown. <laughs> yeah, but LL was an amazing rapper, and I definitely had to keep... He was right on my back. We did a lot of touring together, but yeah. he's a serious... He's like Gigantor, big muscle-bound <laughs> rapper, <laughs> take his shirt off, muscles. I'm like, okay, all right, let me, let me keep my eye on this dude. Yeah, keep your eye on him. Well, we keep an eye on you. You got to stick around for Thank a little you. bit, okay? I'm here. All I'm right. Here. More with Rev Run. We'll be right back. Here. Back with Rev Run. From Queens, I love that title. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why was it so important to get your story out now? Well, I think it's all serendipity, God, because the 50th year hip hop came. We were talking about doing the documentary, and years would go past, and we doing it, and not doing it, and trying to doing it, and maybe doing it. And next thing you know, poof, this 50th year hip hop, and then it's finished, and poof, it happens. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't make a decision. I think we didn't make too many decisions. People think they're doing things, but I actually think we're being done. Speak. You're be here. Come on, elaborate. You think you're doing, but God is doing it for you. Yes. God knew what I was going to... Michael Jordan was going to dunk, I was going to rap, you was going to be sitting here. Like, we have some room, uh -huh. but a lot of the time, we ain't got that much room. Y'all listening? You ain't you got as much preach. room as you think you do. Yes. And it's good to trust it and walk into it, You got to trust it, walk into it. Like you said, you was a singer. How'd you end up with this big, beautiful show? Right. Did you expect this when you was first singing? You know what I didn't. Did Every you time wake I come up out and to say, I'm gonna be a TV host. Did you ever say that? Mm -mm. Somebody came to you, agents, and, da, 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 and boom, here we sit. With all these beautiful people. Lovely. And people. legends like yourself. All right, that's a lot. See, a lot see, for me to carry. I, hey, no. hey, I'm just here. Look at him. Some, look, in you, God's plan. Yes, you're in God's plan. His legendary plan at thank that. You, thank you. Now, speaking of legends, you talk in your docuseries about meeting Michael Jackson? Yeah. What was that like? Well, after we made Walk This Way, Michael wanted to make a record with us. And he came into the studio, because he had a studio set up, and he had the Bubbles with him, the monkey. Bubbles? Was with him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in. And I ask him the question, I say, because I'm like caught up, like, Michael, how does it feel to be Michael? And I'm thinking he's going to, you know, the limos, the big life. He's like, very, very thankful. <laughs> I'm like, that's not the answer I was looking for. <laughs> I wanted to hear something spectacular, but that's all he said to me. He's very, very thankful. So we um, put together some music for him, and he went one way. We wanted, it was, he was on fire, Run DMC was hot too, and we never connected back to finish the record, but... Very, very thankful. <laughs>
That's what he said. <laughs> I wanted to hear something spectacular. That's why he gave you. Like, I get down like this and I sing like this. <laughs> day, day, day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, I got to actually, I mean, because, whew, you've been in the game for a minute. And, yes. And, you know, I can't. Since 83. 83, y'all. 83. Did you ever think your fashion would change the game and be so impactful? Oh, the fa I got something for you. I got you got something? something yes, up. yes, yes. Bring it out. Bring it out. You know I love. Ooh. Ducky, 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 ducky. Sir, you ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing. Oh my God. I signed it. You signed it for me. And I got you the shell. And they signed. You good? I'm good, Joe. You good? We'll be right back. Listen. We're back with Rev Run. Y'all see my good outfit? Don't touch it. You Keep set. It look. You set. You good. I'm framing this. Oh, I love it. You know that? When I come back, I see it on the wall. That's right. Lined up. Because you gave it to me. Thank you. Y'all know this is real, OK? <laughs> now, listen, my son loved your show, Run's House. OK. He got me put up on that oh, show. Oh, it? baby, we was watching it together. OK, OK, OK. Like, what was your favorite part about doing it? Um, waking up and being able to work at home. Mm. And then when the cameras leave, I can get in the bed. That's a boss right there. So how, how could you have a better job than when you wake up in your house, and then when they leave, you're still home? I don't have to go home. Yes. So we did that for like six seasons, and it was the, it, it wasn't only easy, it was fun, and it was helpful to people to yeah. show a family man. Like, you go from rapper, that's a great... It's a family thing. man in front of the whole world on MTV. Mm. You, you, you show your children, mm -hmm. you show your wife, you show love, you show unity, you show the ups and downs, and you give the world something that they can look at and right. say, man, I love that. When I get older, I'm going to have children. I want to treat my wife nice. I want to be kind. I want to be loving. I want to be like the Rev. So that was my job, <laughs> to give my life to the world and... um. I never took it as some celebrity stuff. I took it as a job mm -hmm. to give God's word on camera to the world, especially on a, a channel like MTV. Yes. You know, you're thinking it's going to be some ratchet craziness, but it was just a loving, kind, happy show, mm -hmm. giving out love and Real giving too. out lessons. Yeah. I did the words of wisdom in the tub. Yeah, that. let's talk about that. Uh, yes, <laughs> the words of wisdom in the tub. Do you do that all the time? I still do it every day. You do? Every single day. If you go to my Instagram, Rev W O N, I'm always giving words of wisdom because when I get in the tub, I get relaxed. I'm like, all right. And then God just starts speaking. speaking. And I hit him like, do your best and forget the rest. Or whatever pops inside of me, mm -hmm. I give it to the world. And I take that as being able to give the word of God in my tub to the world. And I did that on MTV. And that is a calling. Calling. It's a call to do that. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. That show was for me to give the world positivity. That's what this show's about. As, of course it is. That's my goal. That's why I'm here. You see that? That's what it's about. You nailed it right oh, there. that's what it is. You see that? God wanted you here to give love. Yes, because we need that, that, right? All we need is love. All we need is love. Listen, okay, I got to ask you, have you ever dropped that phone in the tub, though? <laughs> I dropped it in the pool once, In the pool? Never in the tub. Really? Yeah, and then I got the type of phone that if it goes under the water, ain't no problem. Boss? Just boss stuff. Boss. Just drop, but I never dropped everything. it in the tub. Okay. I got that like, little marble on the side. Just sit it there, think, pick it back up. And that's when the Blackberry was out. Now I got I the love iPhone. Blackberry. Blackberry was back in the day. Bring it back. Old school. You need to look at that joint. Right. Okay. Miss, I want, we all want to know, how did you go from Rev... How did you get to Rev from? Well, you know what? With all the fame and notoriety that God gave me. I was all the way up, but I was still empty once you got there. You know, mm -hmm. you're thinking this is gonna fill you, or it's gonna fill me to be a big star, it's gonna fill me to rap and fill me to do, and all of a sudden, God takes you, well, me, took me to the very top. Then I had to get back grounded and find God, so I just started going to church. I didn't know I was gonna be a rev. Mm. I had no idea I was gonna be a reverend, so I was just like, moving through, trying to find what's next for me in this life. 
And in the black church, you don't just go to church. You're going to be an usher. You're going to be an usher. Gonna be a deacon, deacon board. board. You're going to be a uh -huh. choir. A trustee, a choir So member, that director. collar got wrapped around my neck as I, you know, stayed in the church, right. did what I was supposed to do under great Bishop Jordan. Come on. And um, at Zoe Ministries. Yes. And when I was there, I had great mentorship, and I became the Rev. I didn't mean it. Mm. But your you're called. You're called. That's Chosen. why I said, you think you're doing, but you're being done. But you're being done. You always yeah. remember that. You think you're doing something, you're being done. I'm taking that in. That's as, true. As we speak. Thank you so much for that. What is it like when you go to church and being recognized by your church Oh, no, members? well, that's a good story. OK, what you got? So I remember being at the church being an usher, uh -huh. right? So on the I'm, on, I'm, 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 I'm ushering people to their seats. And this kid came in. He was with his grandmother. Now, she's trying to get him away from the streets. Mm -hmm. And he looks and he says, that usher looks very familiar. <laughs> and she's like, you better come, boy. They ain't going to take on Run DMC. I <laughs> said, that's usher's Run DMC. He said, grandma said, you sit yourself. Grab him by the ear, took yeah. him to the chair. That ain't no Ron DMC. And he, he looked over at me and I winked. I said, that's me, Ron DMC. <laughs> <laughs> but he. <laughs> he couldn't believe that the guy that's sitting us in our seat is an usher. And his grandmother was like, you're lying. <laughs> now sit down and listen to the word of God. <laughs> Did she ever figure it out? No, I just kept winking them the whole time. Okay. He but look back, I go, that's me. And that's probably why he's sitting in church today. Because to this you day. were a great example to him thank and you. so many others. Thank you. Thank and you, we thank honor you for everything you are thank and you, that you, you do. You blessed us. You brought us together. You brought us so much joy, great music, and everything. So here at the Jennifer Hudson Show, we want to give you your Legends Award well, for you, you because you are just that. Oh, there God. you go. Look what I got, Mom. And nobody like them. Thank you so much for being here. Will you come back and see us again? Yes. My Adidas. <laughs> oh. All right, Kings from Queens. The Run DMC story is available now on Peacock. We'll be watching and we'll be right back. The big game is this weekend, so our friends at Morning Safe are setting us up for a win with more deals that sing. <laughs> And here to help us score is my shopping teammate, Cheryl Burke. Come on in. Jennifer, 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 Jennifer. I've got some great products to make sure your weekend is a winner. All of you at home can start shopping right now by checking out MorningSave.com or by scanning the QR code below. Better get them quick before they're intercepted. Let's start. I am ready. All right, so let's just set the mood, shall we? Let's get the lights down a little bit. Perfect, okay. So this product right here is so perfect for the big game. It's the Yaber Pro Wi-Fi and Bluetooth projector. Yes, I said Bluetooth. It can connect to all of your devices. With its bright display and razor sharp images, you can build your home theater, elevate your camping trips, and have the best movie night on the block. Jennifer, who are you rooting for this weekend? Um, the team that wears red. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> 49ers, okay, same, 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 same. We've seen this retail for as high as $224. With a deal that sync discount, you can get this for only $99. No, I never, never believe it. That's it. That's a savings of 55%. This is how I'm watching the game. Come on, girl. Do I get go over this way? Okay, this is gorgeous. I actually have one myself. This next product caters to all of the Usher fans that will be tuning in solely mm. for the halftime show. That's right, I'll be doing that too. It's a Diamond Muse half carat flower design genuine diamond tennis bracelet. This bracelet, okay, look how beautiful, look it's how shiny I'm that looking. is. This bracelet features a half carat of shining real diamonds in genuine sterling silver, okay? Diamond Muse Jewelry is always a top seller on Morning Save because of its beautiful quality and discount. Jennifer, hmm? diamonds, football, or Usher? Girl, it's gonna have to be the diamonds for me. I know you Usher, awesome, but it's the diamonds for me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we see this retail for as high as $305 with the deals at sync discount. You can get this for only 
59. Stop it! I need a sleeve. That is right, a whole sleeve. How That's a savings of 80%. Oh my god. That's right. What do we have okay. <laughs> We'll now, this thing will come in handy for sure. This next item is perfect for someone on the go. It's the Unifun Cordless Mini Car Vacuum Cleaner, okay? Trucking from party to party this weekend. Mm. Our cars will get messy. I mean, who snacks in their car? Do you, I mean, right? It's not a road trip without a snack. Exactly. Okay. This mini vac is perfect for a better, more convenient clean. The different attachments detail your car like the pros. Okay. You can even use this as an air blower, a blow dryer, just kidding, to get rid of <laughs> dust or inflate items, okay? Jennifer, do you have a messy car? I, they, yes, girl. All them crumbs. Oh my Same. God. This will come in such handy. <laughs> We've seen this retail for as high as $52 with the deals that sing discount. You can get this Bunch. for only, oh my goodness, $19.99. That's my a saving of 62%. That's my car gonna be so clean. <laughs> yes. Okay. I finally brought you a doorbuster deal this and thing. brought you guys a doorbuster deal. That's right. Remember, only three per person is the two pack Bliss Lights Bliss Glow 16 feet Bluetooth LED strip lights with 32 feet of light strips. These can just basically go about anywhere, right? They have an easy, damage free installation that you can do yourself. You can even cut them to fit your space, and they feature 12 colors that turn on one at a time or as a rainbow. They're blinking. With four music sensing modes to really set the mood. Music too? Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, oh, how important is lighting to you? You know, lighting is everything. Everything. And my kid would love this. <laughs> That's right. We've seen this retail for as high as $90. With the deals at Sync Discount, you can get two of these for only guests. What? $10. <laughs> That's Decorating the whole That's world. amazing. That's a savings of 89%. Cheryl, I love these morning save deals. Let's help someone in the audience score a touchdown That's this right. weekend and go home with all of these fabulous products. If your name is on the screen and you're our lucky winner, then come. You are a winner, baby. Come on. Let's do it. Let's see who we got. Yeah. Congratulations, Amber. And thank you, Cheryl. You're awesome for sharing the deals that see. Make sure to check out Cheryl's podcast, Sex, Lies, and Spray Tins, anywhere you listen to your podcast. And to get these deals that sing before they're all gone, visit our morningsave.com or scan the QR code below while supplies last. I'm about to get it all. We'll be right back. When I watched this next video, I knew I wanted to meet our next guest. Y'all take a look. Hey, what's up, Jennifer? Did you know that in LA, one in five of our college students are experiencing homelessness? and two-thirds of them are experiencing hunger. My name is Sam Prater. I'm the founder of Los Angeles Room and Board, and our mission is simple. We exist to end college student hunger and homelessness and to ensure that they complete their college degree. Come on with us. In addition to providing housing, we provide a comprehensive set of wraparound services designed to ensure their success. Our services include meeting weekly with our case managers to ensure that our mental health is intact, we also provide three meals a day to our students, cooked by this amazing cast of chefs. Tutoring and academic coaching. Job readiness and career development. And life skills training that prepares them for success, both inside the classroom, on their places of employment, and in their personal lives. Plus a full suite of amenities like our cafe, laundromat, and barbershop that are designed to sort of eliminate stress for our students so they can focus on their housing transition and their success in the classroom. So I founded LA Room and Board in 2020 with just 15 students. Now you're at our fourth property here in LA where we now provide housing to 190 folks who are experiencing homelessness. Thanks so much for allowing us to share our story and we hope we can share it with you in person. Take care. From Los Angeles, California, please welcome Sam Prater. How are you feeling right now? A little nervous. But I'm excited. I'm excited. We're excited yeah. to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Sam. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay, before we get into what you do, can you tell me about your childhood? Uh, yeah, I grew up in Detroit, on the west side of Detroit. Uh, I'm the 12th born of 14 kids to my mom and my dad. You know, um, seven boys, seven girls. And it, it was a fun childhood, you know what I mean? My dad 
was a you know working class guy working at a on the assembly line and my mom was a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. uh lots of music we sang all the time you know what i mean grew up in church and so we were the choir and the musicians and so <laughs> i had a you know i had a really really fun childhood okay childhood. that is beautiful yeah, yeah. and your journey like yeah. at yeah. one point you spent the time being homeless yeah how did that yeah. happen so you know as great as my childhood was you know the music stopped in our house when my mom died suddenly and unexpectedly. And it was yeah. my dad and the 14 of us. And so, you know, he couldn't keep track of all of us. And so when I was 16, you know, I was being a knucklehead and dropped out of, out of high school, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then my dad had this 18 and out rule. So once you turn 18, you go to the military, you get married, start your own family, or you go to college. And so I didn't do any of those things. And my dad said, you got to get the heck up out of here. Mm. And so at 18, you know, I went on my own, wasn't prepared for independent living, which led to you know, two evictions and then the couch surfing at times, living with stuff out of my car. And so, you know, that it was a really traumatic sort of like experience. And then when you're going, going through it, you think it's just like survival. Right. You know, we didn't like have like language then like, oh, I'm experiencing homelessness, right? It was just like, I'm doing what I got to do to kind of get through life. Yes, it was your life journey. Yeah. Definitely. So when did you decide to like go back to get your education? Uh, I was 23. You know, I was kind of like applying for this one job. And it was like this really pivotal moment. Um, I was applying for a job and, you know, from 16 until 23, it's like on every job application, did you graduate high school? Sure, sure did. You know what I mean? I was just mm -hmm. lying, right? And then I was a job I really wanted and they called me back and said, hey, we want to offer you the job. You did a good job in the interview, but we can't verify your high school diploma. And I was like, ah, yep, I'm caught. And that was the moment when the lights came on for me, like I need to do something different. So I enrolled at my community college through the Adult Education Center and finished my high school equivalency. And that so amazing. Went, from, <laughs> went from there, from uh, community college to my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and I finished up my doctorate degree. No. And so, I'm, yes. you know, I, I honestly don't know where I'd be if education hadn't rescued me. You know what I mean? And so I went on to sort of like stay in higher ed, working in student housing and residence life so I can kind of prepare folks for success, both in the classroom and outside of it. So that is I, amazing. I, thank you. You're soaring. <laughs> Tell us about Los Angeles Women Board. Los Angeles Women Board, I, mean, I, I founded this organization that is focused on ending college student and youth homelessness and hunger, right? Uh, one in five youth in LA who are in college one are experiencing five. homelessness. Two thirds are getting through college trying to figure out, well, I don't have enough money for breakfast and dinner, or so I'm only gonna eat lunch because that's all I can afford today, right? And so you can't focus on being a scholar mm -hmm. when, you're, when you are dealing with your stomach growling, right? And so we serve a, a wide you know, variety of students, folks who are current and former foster youth, folks who are formerly incarcerated, immigrant youth, uh, uh, overrepresentation of LGBTQIA plus youth because when they tell their truths to their families, sometimes families say, uh, you can't live here. Right. And so you know, that's what we're doing. And not just providing um, a cot for people to folks stay on, like we try to provide spaces that feel like you have dignity, that you feel, that feel inspirational and aspirational. So it's the mental health and wellness, the three, meals a day that are prepared by our chefs, you know, um, you know, uh, job readiness and career development, tutoring and academic coaching. So we want to set them up for success in their lives before they leave our spaces. You're doing just that. <laughs> How does it feel that you're now in a position to be able to make that difference for others? It's kind of a wild kind of thing. You know, when you experience something like homelessness, right? Mm -hmm. You try to like push those experiences to like the dark recesses of your mind and your heart. And it's been, kind of a full circle moment to sort of like go through that and try to hide that pain right. and watch God turn it into purpose, yes. right? And, and now I get the chance to sort of like provide hope and, and, and opportunity to folks who were in my same mm -hmm. experience, same in my same shoes, right? And so it's been, it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful gift from God for turn sure. Turn your pain into purpose. Come on, let's go. I got chills. Will you stick <laughs> around for a little bit? I will, I will. All right, <laughs> well with Sam, when we return, we'll be right back. All right, we're back with Sam Prater, founder of Los Angeles Room and Board. Now, you experienced a bunch of no's in the process. What is the thing that keeps you going? Because you already have a light on you. You're so positive oh, wow. and vibrant, and I see it. Y'all feel thank it? You. you see it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, how do you keep going past the no's? Yeah, 2019 was a really pivotal year. Like, I was trying to, like, spread the, the word, the message about what we were doing. Like, it was just an idea. We hadn't housed anybody yet, and so... Mm -hmm. All through 2019, it was just like, yeah, that's a really good idea. Talk to us in three years, right? It was just no after yeah. no after no. Then in 2020, I was working full time at Cal State LA, and I was talking to my boss, and she shared with me a sermon she heard at mass from her priest called mm -hmm. Free Fall. And it was about taking the leap and believing that God will catch you. 
Mm. And then I was crying in her office. And two weeks later, I said to my resignation, I said, you know what, I'm going to just, instead of doing LA Women Board on nights and weekends, I'm going to do it full time. And then the pandemic, you know, this was in February 2020, pandemic happened, we all shut down. And I'm like, well, my timing is terrible, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then um, in, in April of 2020, we got our first house. It was a, a vacant sorority house right across the street from UCLA that had been vacant for three years. I could house 50 students there. 50 students. 50 students. And so, you know, all the no's, if you kind of keep going and you trust God, you that took a leap out on take faith. that leap. And, and then two months after quitting my job, that's when Ellie Rubin Board got to start in the height of the pandemic in 2020. We opened up with 15 students. Now we have the capacity to house 190. And so it's been a, it's been a blessing. Yes. Yeah, 100%. I love learning and hearing about the kids that you house. Like, what is that like and how are they? Yeah, it's, it's great. Like, I love seeing them thrive, right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about one of my students just recently uh, uh, found us when he was living in his car uh, while at Santa Monica Community College and just recently finished his associate's degree and transfer degree, got accepted into UC Berkeley. UCLA, USC, yeah. and Columbia. <laughs> Columbia got into the Ivy League, right? And, and so, so many, so many of our students sort of like, you know, after they've been with us for a couple of years, you know, reunite with their families, yes. you know, move on to become self-sufficient and are thriving in college and in, on the work, and in the workforce, right? And so it's just been a blessing to watch them really, really succeed because of the work that we're doing. And so, yeah, like, Jennifer, it's been an incredible blessing for sure. It sounds like yeah, it. I love it. It's amazing what yeah. you are doing. Okay, we all want to know how can we help? How can we get involved? Like, what do we need to do? Well, you know, a year and a half ago, it was just me at the Opportunity House. Uh, I was living there, you know, being the, the cook, the case manager, mm. writing grants, doing the, wearing every hat. And we've expanded now to four locations across LA. And I now have 18 full-time staff, you know, 190 beds, you know, a culinary team that provides three meals a day, like fresh meals that we cook and, and we use the ingredients that are grown in our garden. And so our costs have gone up. So we now have an operating budget of $5 million, right? And so if folks want to sort of partner with me, if you believe that no student should have to sort of like sacrifice or choose between where am I going to sleep mm -hmm. and can I finish this college degree, then I'd invite you to sort of donate. You know, like you can find us on our website, you know, follow us on Instagram and see the work that we're doing so you see where your, where your funds and your resources are being put to good use. And so, um, and then also volunteer. You know, we love, anytime I can sort of like get folks who do incredible things in front of our youth, because you can't be what you can't see. And so the more that we, you, you know what I mean? And so the more that we can kind of get folks who have incredible journeys through college or career in front of our youth, and it gives them something to aspire to, right? right? And so, right. but we definitely need to raise that $5 million. Yes. It's our first time having to raise money at that level. A year and a half ago, I had to just raise $500,000. And so this is but a, a monumental task. That's you right. Get to that $5 Let's million. go. I believe you. Yes, yes. I believe you. Tell me this. What's your ultimate goal with the Los Angeles Women Board? The ultimate goal with LA Women Board, honestly, will be when we can close our doors. Mm. You know, like we're on a mission to end college student hunger and homelessness. And so, and it's a very solvable issue. Homelessness in this country is solvable. I yes. believe that in yeah, my heart. Yeah, I believe it. I believe and, it. and so our work is done when we can end it. And so I'll pack it up. We know we'll all say goodbye. And then we know that no student has to sleep in their car in order to get to the commencement stage. Thank God we got you. Yes. That is for sure. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, okay? You and come back to see us. Keep us posted on yes. all of that. We'll do. Y'all can volunteer and help out to find out how you can help this amazing cause. Please visit our website. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.